St. Paul was born in Japan between 1564 and 1566, 
Entering the Society of Jesus, he preached the gospel to the people with great success, but when persecution against Catholics became oppressive, he was arrested along with 25 others. After enduring torment and derision, they were finally taken to Nagasaki and there suffered crucifixion in 1570, in 1597 on the vigil of this day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Come, let us sing to the Lord, and shout with joy to the Rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King over all the gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to him. The dry land too, for it was formed by his hand. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Come then, let us bow down and worship, bending the knee before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people, the flock he shepherds. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Today listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn as your fathers did in the wilderness, when at Meribah and Massa they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Forty years I endured that generation. I said they are people whose hearts go astray and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of martyrs. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, <laughs> and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us worship Christ, the King of Martyrs. Blessed feast of blessed martyrs, holy women, holy men, with our love and admiration, greet we your return again. Worthy deeds are theirs and wonders, worthy Such are his thoughts. 
is not this ever untroubled. Your judgment is far from his mind. His enemies he regards with contempt. He thinks never shall I falter. Misfortune shall never be my lot. His mouth is full of cursing, God, oppression, mischief and deceit under his tongue. He lies in wait among the reeds. The innocent he murders in secret. His eyes are on the watch for the helpless man. He lurks in hiding like a lion in his lair. He lurks in hiding to seize the poor. He seizes the poor man and drags him away. He crouches preparing to spring, and the helpless fall beneath his strength. He thinks in his heart God forgets. He hides his face he does not see. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, you know the burden of my sorrow. Arise then, Lord, lift up your hand. O God, do not forget the Lord. Why should the wicked spurn the Lord and think in his heart he will not punish? But you have seen the trouble and sorrow. You noted you take it in hand. The helpless trust himself to you, for you are the helper of the orphan. Break the power of the wicked and the sinner. Punish his wickedness till nothing remains. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen shall perish from the land he rules. Lord, you hear the prayer of the poor. You strengthen their heart to turn your ear. To protect the rights of the orphan and oppressed. So that mortal man may strike terror no more. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The words of the Lord are true, like silver from the furnace. Help, O Lord, for good men have vanished. Truth has gone from the sons of men. Also they speak with lying lips and a false heart. May the Lord destroy all lying lips. The tongue that speaks thy sounding words. Those who say our tongue is our strength, our lips are our own who is our master. For the poor who are oppressed, and the needy who groan. I myself will arise, says the Lord. I will grant them the salvation for which they thirst. The, the words of the Lord are words with a hallow, silver from the furnace seven times refined. It is you, O Lord, who will take us in your care and protect us forever from this generation. See how the wicked crowd on every side, while the worthless are prized highly by the sons of men. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord teaches the humble his way. He guides the gentle heart in the long road right now. <clears throat> From the letter to the Galatians. When Cephas came to Antioch, I directly withstood him because he was clearly in the wrong. He had been taking his meals with the Gentiles before others came who were from James. But when they arrived, he drew back to avoid trouble with those who were circumcised. 
The rest of the Jews joined in the dissembling, till even Barnabas was swept away by their pretense. As soon as I observed that they were not being straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I had this to say to Cephas in the presence of all. If you who are a Jew are living according to Gentile ways rather than Jewish, by what logic do you force the Gentiles to adopt Jewish ways? We are Jews by birth, not sinners of Gentile origin. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by legal observance, but by faith in Jesus Christ, we too have believed in him in order to be justified by faith in Christ, not by observance of the law, for by works of the law no one will be justified. But if, in seeking to be justified in Christ, we are shown to be sinners, does that mean that Christ is encouraging sin? Unthinkable. If, however, I were to build up the very things I had demolished, I should then indeed be a transgressor. It was through the law that I died to the law to live for God. I have been crucified with Christ, and the life I live now is not my own. Christ is living in me. I still live my human life, but it is a life of faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I will not treat God's gracious gift as pointless. If justice is available through the law, then Christ died to no purpose. You senseless Galatians, who has cast a spell over you, you before whose eyes Jesus Christ was displayed to view upon his cross? I want to learn only one thing from you. How did you receive the Spirit? Was it through observance of the law or through faith in what you heard? How could you be so stupid? After beginning in the Spirit, are you now to end in the flesh? Have you had such remarkable experiences all to no purpose, if indeed they were to no purpose? Is it because you observe the law, or because you have faith in what you heard, that God lavishes the Spirit on you and works wonders in your midst? Consider the case of Abraham. He believed God and it was credited to him as justice. This means that those who believe are sons of Abraham. Because Scripture saw in advance that God's ways of justifying the Gentiles would be through faith, it foretold this good news to Abraham, All nations shall be blessed in you. Thus it is that all who believe are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. All who depend on observance of the law, on the other hand, are under a curse. It is written, Cursed is he who does not abide by everything written in the book of the law and carried out. It should be obvious that no one is justified in God's sight by the law, for the just man shall live by faith. But the law does not depend on faith. Its terms are whoever does these things shall live by them. Christ has delivered us from the power of the law's curse by himself becoming a curse for us, as it is written, Accursed is anyone who is hanged on a tree. This has happened so that through Christ Jesus, the blessing bestowed on Abraham might descend on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, thereby making it possible for us to receive the promised spirit through faith. A man is not justified by observing the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. We have believed in Christ Jesus, so that we might be made holy, not through the observance of the law, but by faith in him. If holiness comes through keeping the law, then Christ died in vain. We have believed in Christ Jesus, so that we might be made holy, not through the observance of the law, but by faith in him.
from an account of the martyrdom of St. Paul Mickey and his companions by a contemporary writer. The crosses were set in place. Father Pasio and Father Rodriguez took turns encouraging the victim. Their steadfast behavior was wonderful to see. The Father Bursar stood motionless, his eyes turned heavenward. Brother Martin gave thanks to God's goodness by singing psalms. Again and again he repeated, Into your hands, Lord, I entrust my life. Brother Francis Franco also thanked God in a loud voice. Brother Gonsalvo in a very loud voice kept saying the Our Father and Hail Mary. Our brother Paul Mickey saw himself standing now in the noblest pulpit he had ever filled. To his congregation he began by proclaiming himself a Japanese and a Jesuit. He was dying for the gospel he preached. He gave thanks to God for this wonderful blessing, and he ended his sermon with these words. As I come to this supreme moment of my life, I am sure none of you would suppose I want to deceive you. And so I tell you plainly, there is no way to be saved except the Christian way. My religion teaches me to pardon my enemies and all who have offended me. I do gladly pardon the emperor and all who have sought my death. I beg them to seek baptism and be Christians themselves. Then he looked at his comrades and began to encourage them in their final struggle. Joy glowed in all their faces, and in Lewis most of all. When a Christian in the crowd cried out to him that he would soon be in heaven, his hands, his whole body strained upward with such joy that every eye was fixed upon him. Anthony, hanging at Lewis' side, looked toward heaven and called upon the holy names, Jesus, Mary. He began to sing a song, Praise the Lord, you children. He learned it in catechism class in Nagasaki. They take care to teach the children some songs to help them learn their catechism. Others kept repeating, Jesus, Mary. Their faces were serene. Some of them even took to urging the people standing by to live worthy Christian lives. In these and other ways, they showed their readiness to die. Then, according to Japanese custom, the four executioners began to unsheath their spears. At this dreadful sight, all the Christians cried out, Jesus, Mary. And the storm of anguished weeping then rose to batter the very skies. The executioners killed them one by one. One thrust of the spear, then a second blow. It was over in a very short time. glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In him is our salvation, life, and resurrection. Through him we are saved and set free. This grace has been given to you, not only to believe in Christ, but also to suffer for his sake. Through him we, have, we are saved and set free. The man whose deeds are blameless and whose heart is pure will climb the mountain of the poor. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness. The world and all its peoples in the sea who centers on the sea on the waters he made with her. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man who clean has a pure heart, who desires not worthless sin, who has not sworn, so as to deceive his neighbor, he shall receive blessings from the Lord, and reward from the God who sees him. Such are the men who seek him, seek the face of the God of Jacob, 
the people he has chosen as his own. From the heavens the Lord looks forth, he sees all the children of men. From the place where he dwells, he gazes on all the dwellers on the earth. He who shakes the hearts of them all, and considers all their deeds. A king is not saved by his army, nor a warrior preserved by his strength. A vain hope for safety is the Lord. Despite its power, it cannot save. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in heaven. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. In him do our hearts find joy. We trust in his holy name. May the Lord be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. From the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our afflictions and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolation we have received from him. As we have shared much in the suffering of Christ, so through Christ do we share abundantly in his consolation. The just are the friends of God. They live with him forever. The just are the friends of God. They live with him forever. God himself is their reward. They live with him forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The just are the friends of God. They live with him forever. Blessed are those who suffer for persecution for the sake of justice. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, for the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his evil knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Savior's faithfulness is mirrored in the fidelity of his witnesses who shed their blood for the word of God. Let us praise him in remembrance of them. You redeemed us by your blood. You redeemed us by your blood. Your martyrs freely embrace death by bearing witness to the faith. Give us the true freedom of the Spirit, O Lord. You redeemed us by your blood. Your martyrs profess their faith by shedding their blood. Give us a faith, O Lord, that is constant and pure. You redeemed us by your blood. Your martyrs followed in your footsteps by carrying the cross. Help us to endure courageously the misfortunes of life. You redeemed us by your blood. Your martyrs wash their garments in the blood of the Lamb. Help us to avoid the weaknesses of the flesh and worldly allurements. You redeemed us by your blood. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God our Father, the source of strength for all your saints, you led Paul Miki and his companions through the suffering of the cross to the joy of eternal life. May their prayers give us courage to be loyal until death and professing our faith. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. We will now play, pray the rosary in the Dominican form. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. O Lord, open my lips. O God, come to my assistance. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The first sorrowful mystery is the agony in the garden. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. The second sorrowful mystery is the scourging at the pillar. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. The third sorrowful mystery is the crowning of thorns. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. The fourth sorrowful mystery is the carrying of the cross. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, 
and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. The fifth sorrowful mystery is the crucifixion. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant, we beseech thee, that while meditating upon these mysteries, of the Most Holy Rosary, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the divine assistance remain always with us. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The souls of the saints are rejoicing in heaven, the saints who followed the footsteps of Christ, and since for love of him they shed their blood, they now exult with Christ forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. 
Today we continue our novena in honor of Our Lady of Lourdes, and we celebrate Saint Paul Miki and companions, martyrs of Japan. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, strength of all the saints, who through the cross were pleased to call the martyr St. Paul Miki and companions to life, grant, we pray, that by their intercession we may hold with courage even until death to the faith that we profess. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the whole community of Israel. And stretching forth his hands toward heaven, he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You keep your covenant of mercy with your servants who are faithful to you with their whole heart. Can it indeed be that God dwells on earth? If the heavens and the highest heavens cannot contain you, how much less this temple which I have built. Look kindly on the prayer and petition of your servant, O Lord my God, and listen to the cry of supplication which I, your servant, utter before you this day. May your eyes watch night and day over this temple, the place where you have decreed you shall be honored, May you heed the prayer which I, your servant, offer in this place. Listen to the petitions of your servant and of your people Israel, which they have offer, which they offer in this place. Listen from your heavenly dwelling and grant pardon. The word of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest in which she puts her young your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed they, blessed they who dwell in your house, continually they praise you. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. I had rather one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I had rather lie at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked.
Alleluia, alleluia. Incline my heart, O God, to your decrees and favor me with your law. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Who in the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, The people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human principles, precepts. You disregard God's commandment, by, but cling to human tradition. He went on to say, How well you have set aside the commandment of God in order to uphold your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever curses father or mother shall die. Yet you say, If someone says to father or mother, Any support you might have had from me is korban, meaning dedicated to God, you allow him to do nothing more for his father or mother. You nullify the word of God in favor of your tradition that you have handed on, and you do many such things. The Gospel of the Lord. As with our novenas, the preaching is after the Mass, and yet I will just say one brief thing about the Japanese martyrs. Uh, many people know the Japanese martyrs from the film or the book Silence, and a lot of people get it confused in their reading of the book Silence, or especially in the film and the interpretation, especially the ending by Scorsese. The author himself, Endo, Endo rather, then states what it should be. The real heroes are the martyrs. Paul Miki and companions, who in the opening prayer said they suffered greatly and they find life through their death by fidelity to the gospel. What the, the, but, the, but the ones who are not the heroes in the books of the apostates, those who, read, who, who fail in the teaching. So this, this is important to remember in our understanding of the Japanese martyrs. And today, of course, we bring our intentions to the Lord all of those who have brought our intentions to St. Jude, especially then those who have uh, sent in the petitions, those in the basket here, and we also remembered our masses today, our benefactors and those resting here, the needs of Brian Della Pena, and the needs of Steve Maraccini.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your martyrs, St. Paul, Miki, and companions, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect our power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in our highest. Blessed is he. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, O oh Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those joining at a distance, an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
see how rich the saints reward from God. They died for Christ and will live forever. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from the sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. After, after Mass here, we'll have the blessing with both relics, St. Jude, in the middle, and St. Bernadette to one side. So please get both relic blessings, Jude and Bernadette, in honor of our Booker's visionary of our Lady of Lords. Uh, I found yesterday, if you line up in the middle, I'll go up the center aisle to you. I'll bless you along the way. The first row first, and then down the aisle. And then, and then you can come forward for the other relic blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel.
If you would pray with me the prayer to Our Lady of the Lords in St. Jude, which is found on page 13. Our Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of Mercy, you are the refuge of sinners, the health of the sick, and the comfort of the afflicted. You know my wants, my troubles, my suffering. By your appearance at the Grotto of Lords, you made it a privileged sanctuary where our favors are given to people streaming to it from the whole world. Over the years, countless sufferers have obtained a cure for their infirmities, whether of soul, mind, or body. Therefore, I come to you with St. Jude as my patron to implore your motherly intercession. Obtain a loving mother the grant of my request. Through gratitude for your favors, I will endeavor to imitate your virtues, that I may one day share in your glory. Amen. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invokes you universally as the praetor of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, that the particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly and that I may praise God with you and all the elect through all eternity. I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen. from the apparitions to St. Bernadette. The second time was the following Sunday. I went back because I felt myself interiorly impelled. My mother had permitted me to go, and after Mass, the two other girls and myself went to ask my mother again. She did not want us to go. She said that she was afraid that I should fall in the water. She was afraid that I would not be back for Vespers. I promised that I would. Then she gave me permission to go. I went to the parish church to get a little bottle of holy water to throw over the vision if I were to see her at the grotto. When we arrived, we all took our rosaries and we knelt down to say them. I had hardly finished the first decade when I saw the same lady. Then I started to throw holy water in her direction and at the same time said that if she came from God, she was to stay. Then I went on saying my rosary. When I had finished, she disappeared, and we came back to Vespers. The Gospel this morning dealt with the Pharisees. And if someone were to call you a Pharisee, it's safe to say that they didn't mean it as a compliment. It's understandable that the Pharisees have a bad reputation because the only thing most people know about them comes from the Gospel, and most of what we read of them in the Gospels is Jesus admonishing them. But the Pharisees weren't all that bad if we look at their beliefs. They actually had more in common with us than many other Jewish sects of the day. For example, they believed in the entire Old Testament as part of scripture. The Sadducees, for example, denied the existence of angels, the afterlife, and the resurrection from the dead, whereas the Pharisees believed in all those things. And so if the Pharisees' religious teachings had so much in common with us, why was Jesus so harsh in his criticism of them? It was precisely because they had so much correct in terms belief that Jesus would hold them to a higher standard. The Pharisees, you see, were religious experts, but despite this expertise, they failed to practice what they preached. 
They often refuse to live by the very law they demanded others to observe. As we saw in the gospel, they interpreted the law as they saw fit to justify their understanding of it. And in today's gospel, we heard Jesus tell the Pharisees, well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honor me, honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And so their lives were counter witnesses to their teaching. Now, we sometimes are tempted to think that the sin of the Pharisees as being too rigorous when it comes to religious practice. But Jesus never condemned the Pharisees for their religious observances. Rather, he condemned them for their hypocrisy. And so that definition of hypocrisy is to hold others to standards that we ourselves don't observe. It is one of those sins that makes us angry when we see it in others, and it can be one of the most difficult to recognize in ourselves. And so today's gospel deals with that, and sadly, it's a topic that is perennially re relevant, which makes it worth for us to consider. So let me invite you to consider it first from a non-religious context. Let's imagine that a doctor advises you to exercise and to eat healthy and to get eight hours of sleep. I think we would all agree that this is sound advice. But then let us imagine that that same doctor was a couch potato who ate mostly junk food and stayed up till all hours of the night. And when that doctor whom we recognize is not doing what he should take care of himself tells us that we need exercise, that we need to eat well, that we need to, eat, that we need to get plenty of sleep, then we might accuse him of being a hypocrite because he isn't practicing what he preaches. So we ask, why doesn't that doctor follow his own advice? It's easy, at least for me, to imagine several reasons. Maybe the doctor didn't believe in his own words. Maybe he thinks that that exercise and eating well doesn't really make a difference. But he's just saying it to people because we want to hear it. I think we would say that that doctor is being dishonest, and so he deserves that label of hypocrite. Or maybe the doctor really doesn't be really believes that what, we, that what he says, but he lacks that self-awareness to realize how poorly he is living up to his own standards. Or maybe He's fully aware that the needs, his needs to improve, but he's struggling to overcome long-established lifestyle habits. In these cases, even though the doctor is not practicing what he preaches, we would hesitate to accuse him of hypocrisy. To be guilty of sin requires that we have knowledge and consent of our will, which would be lacking in these examples. But regardless of the reason why the doctor fails to follow his own advice, does the doctor's personal failure make his advice any less valid? I don't think so. I think it's true that exercising and eating well and getting, through, getting enough rest are important aspects of physical health, even if that person is telling us that the truth, even if that person does not believe in it or doesn't live by it. You see, the truth is still the truth. And it applies, especially when it comes to truths of our faith. And that's why Jesus tells the Pharisees that they honor God with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. Yes, they had received the law of God and God placed them in positions of authority but what they said and how they lived didn't coincide. And regardless of the, their personal failure to live by the law, that law that they received and proclaimed, God's law was still the law, and all of God's people were expected to follow it. And this, imp this is important, my brothers and sisters, for us to realize today when you and I fail to live the truths that we live, 
does not make it the truth any less true and it doesn't lessen our obligation to live by it. And even if we give only lip service to God's law and we don't believe it in our hearts, the truth is still the truth. And I think more often than not that those who fail to live up to the gospel they proclaim doesn't have necessarily sinister motives. I think they are mostly struggling with human weaknesses like the rest of us. But again, the truth is the truth. If our failure to live according to the truth profess we profess doesn't lessen our obligation of that truth in any way, then why does hypocrisy so contemptible? It's because it weakens our witness. It creates that sin of scandal. Now I think that you and I have met people who have left the church or don't practice their faith is because they encountered people in leadership positions, even ourselves who don't really believe what they taught or act at least to seem to believe it. These people concluded that if and even if they didn't believe what they were saying, then why should they? It is our obligation to follow the truth, even if we're poor witnesses to it. But it's much easier to recognize and to receive the truth when it is proclaimed, when one really lives it out with their lips and they honor God with their hearts. Now all of us, I believe again, that living our faith is a heavy burden, but we must practice what we preach. And that's true of all of us who practice our faith in Jesus. Now when we look at scripture, you will find women full of courage and dignity and the heart for the Lord, and they would live with great faith in God, and they lived it with integrity. Their lips praised God, and their hearts were close to the God who made and called them. They were great examples of humility and obedience because they practiced what they preached. Now, all of Mary's approved apparitions are signs that God is with us. And this is true of Our Lady of Lourdes. Mary is the most remarkable person who God asked to carry the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Now, when you and I simply gloss over Mary in the story of Christ's birth, and if we dig deeper, there is so much that we can continue to glean and learn from her own story. And Mary was a woman after God's own heart who led a life of courage and obedience. And we see in Luke telling the story of how Mary followed the call of the Lord. And we know that the angel came to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. We know that Mary was greatly troubled. And nearly every instance of an angel coming to speak with someone that was human, there certainly must have been a level of alarm at the, say, at the sight of something not of this world. It was a time, especially in the times of Mary, where these signs and wonders had not occurred for some time, and so that visitation to that young lady, that young teenager, was especially unexpected. And so she stands before Gabriel with an open heart and ears to hear of what he came to share. Can we imagine what Mary felt in that moment? Can we imagine what St. Bernadette felt when she saw Our Lady and then do what she was asked even though people ridiculed her? It's a question where we might ask ourselves, how do we feel when God calls us to do his will and not our own? Mary's response to Gabriel is both honest and it's clear of her heart for the Lord. Now, she wasn't randomly selected to be the mother of Jesus. She was chosen with thought and purpose. 
May your will, word be fulfilled, your most profound answer to God's will. In order for you and I to fully recognize what Mary agreed to, we must realize that all she knew awaited her in accepting the call and that she did it with an obedient heart. She was foc less focused on how this would impact her life and make things more difficult for her and was more focused on being loyal and being that faithful servant to God. Now you and I can take inspiration from Mary in her response to Gabriel at the call of God. Mary chose at that moment to do God's will and, her, and his call. And that clear, comes clear again because she was chosen to bear God's son. We can take inspiration and encouragement from Mary in our own lives. She was made of flesh and blood just as we are, and she lived in a culture that in many ways was, was more difficult than our own. No doubt, as I said, she was filled with fear, but she did not say no. Our Lady of Lourdes, indeed Mary, shows us how we, you and I, is a call to convert our lives as sinners. So going back to the gospel, Jesus, using the words of Isaiah, cried out as we heard that many of the Pharisees were a people who honors me with their lips, but they are far from me with their hearts. Mary can teach us, my brothers and sisters, what it means to honor God with our whole heart and soul, mind and strength. And she treasured that word in her heart so much that the word took on, took on flesh. And her heart was something where she was constantly saying yes to God, and she let it develop in doing and living according to God's will. Our Lady of Lourdes called in her own maternal mission to help us participate in the heart transplant her God own son came from heaven and earth to bring about. Taking our hearts of stone and replacing them with hearts of flesh, hearts that can love God the Father and others with love that beats in the heart of her son. Again, God does not always call us to easy paths in our journey, but we can rest assured that he is always with us. It is there that he receives more glory as we have a, the opportunity to serve him and bring about his will on earth in doing so. God asks us for our obedience and he will make the way. And Mary shows us that even if we do not know exactly what will happen, we can trust that God has a plan for each of us. She was a woman of great courage and faith and was asked to bring about the promise of God on earth through mothering our Savior. She is that inspiration that you and I, that God calls us to do big things. And so Mary, instead of telling God no because of her fear, Mary offered her yes. Let it, let it, Lord, may it be done as you said with her whole heart. Now we can not rely on our own understanding and ability, but we can rest in faith knowing that God will supply all that is necessary along the way and all that is asked of us in our willingness to obedience. It's, it's a beautiful honor to be asked by God himself to bring about his purposes on earth. And we are capable because he says we are being chosen by him. And so let us pray, my brothers and sisters, for that grace of humility. Let us continue to call in this novena upon Our Lady of Lourdes that we might be good examples for others and that we may have be good examples of virtue, even in our own lives, so that we can emulate as you and I continue to grow in that holiness.
Again, I continue to remind you that if you do not have a petition for this novena, you may get them at the St. Jude altar. And we ask that you place those petitions in the basket here. We will pray for them at all the masses in this novena. The homilies and some of the masses are being recorded and they're being streamed by the St. Jude Shrine and the St. Dominic's YouTube channels. And links are placed in the Shrine's website and on the mass programs. In case you can't come in person for, these, for the time of the Lumina. I give thanks for the devotion to St. Jude, and I give thanks for those who work to make this novena possible. And again, I want to thank you for your donations because it helps us to support the formation of future Dominican priests and brothers. And it helps all of us here to promote and expand the devotion of St. Jude. God bless you this day.